Welcome back to another fantastic art lesson at TotalDrawing.com. Today we're going to draw a Volkswagen bus. And as you can see from the photograph, we're not going to copy the photograph, but instead we're going to use it as a guide and improve on the photograph through using two-point perspective. Let's go ahead and get started with a couple of vanishing points. If you're not familiar with two-point perspective, be sure to watch my video on drawing stairs before continuing with this exercise. I'm going to place my vanishing point on the left about six or seven centimeters off the left edge of my page and a vanishing point on the right just at the edge of my page. Notice that the vanishing points are below the midpoint of the page. Starting with a vertical line that's mostly above the eye level or the imaginary line between the vanishing points, we'll connect its top and bottom to the vanishing point on the left. This first shape that I've drawn will become the front of the Volkswagen bus. Essentially we're drawing a large brick shape and then we'll modify that brick shape into the Volkswagen bus. There we are. Now we have what will become the front side and the side of our Volkswagen bus. The new line I've drawn in will represent the bottom edge of the body of the bus above the level of the wheels and tires. These next two lines represent the height of the wheel wells. Of course, they're not rectangular in shape. They have some curves. I'll start with a rectangular shape and then modify that to look more like the opening around the tires and wheels. We're drawing this Volkswagen bus from a lower angle than what we see in the photograph. So the roof of the bus will be pitched from this lower angle. A little more dynamic, a little more exciting to look at than the bland perspective seen in the photograph. All right, I'll go ahead and start drawing an ellipse around a vertical line, the vertical line representing the vertical axis of our wheels and tires. An ellipse is essentially an oval, except that the front side of the ellipse maybe is just a little bit more round, just a little deeper than the back half of the ellipse. Using the vanishing point on the left, I'll find the bottom edge of the tire that is under the front bumper on the left. It needs to be in line with the tire on our right. And I'll start looking for a windshield. And in fact, the bottom edges of the windows across the side of our Volkswagen bus. Now the Volkswagen's body starts to bend into a curve as it moves upward towards the windows. And so I'll look for that curve now and even the small curve just tucked behind the back wheel. There, the front bumper shape is in place. Again, it has a very subtle curve to it. And I'm going to use an imaginary line to find the center of the front of the bus. Of course, the center of the front of the bus in perspective appears to be just a little closer to the right edge of the front since the left side of the bus is closer to us and thus appears larger. I'll continue to taper the vertical edges of the bus inward towards its center and draw the roof on according to perspective, according to the vanishing points, but with just a subtle curve. You may notice that the body of the bus is a little bit wider in the bottom half than in the top half, and there's a little bit of a rolled edge, a rolled rim that divides what is the blue part of the bus from the white part of the bus. A 
again I'm using the photograph as a guide so I'll try to draw the shapes of the windows according to the photo only in a slightly more dynamic angle or perspective I'm finishing off the bottom edge of that rounded separator or divider between the bottom half and the top half of our bus seems to stick out just a little bit on the back side as well and there's some sort of a vent right along the back of our bus it also breaks that vertical edge note that the windows in the side have vertical edges that are slightly pitched towards the middle of the bus or slightly lean leftward I'll find those now. If you're following along, I just want to point out that at the moment the bus is just a little bit too long. In the video, I'll make a change and shorten the back of the bus in just a few moments. The perspective helps us to accurately draw from a specific eye level. In this case, our eye level is way down near the bumper of the bus. But the perspective does not manage proportion for us. We have to observe our own drawings and decide if the width and the height are acceptable. And I believe this bus is just a little too long. We'll get back to that. First, I'm going to work on some of the details on the front of our bus. I've drawn some marks that I feel like represent where the lights ought to go along the left and use the vanishing point on the left to stretch those marks out all the way across the bus. This way the symmetric features of the front of the bus will agree with one another with regards to their angle and also how the size of those or the scale of those details seem to grow slightly from right to left. Eventually, we'll shape this bus and create a little bit of a natural environment. So I've gone ahead and drawn a couple of lines according to or from the vanishing point on the right that will become the dirt pathway that we see this bus sitting on in the photograph. Let's get a little bit of a closer look and work up these details. That will include the windshield wipers. In the photograph the windshield wipers appear almost completely level, but the vanishing point on the left will help us to lean those windshield wipers uphill toward the right so that they're in agreement with the rest of the windshield. This is a relatively small drawing so lines will do to represent the parts of the windshield wipers. Now these little lights have almost like an eyelid that hangs out over top of them and in the photograph we can see the top of that overhang, but because of the low angle that we're drawing from, we'll have to draw those little headlight eyelids as though we're looking up at them and we'll see the underside. I'll also work up the rear view mirror, the driver's side rear view mirror. Its top and bottom edge lean towards the vanishing point on the left. Any edge that is horizontal in real life on our bus needs to lean towards either the vanishing point on the left or the vanishing point on the right. Alright, I'm going to take care of this proportion problem on our bus now and shorten it up a little bit by moving its back edge towards the left. Now I feel like the back edge of my bus was drawn correctly so you'll see that I redrew the new back edge about a half an inch closer to the center of the page 
before I erased the old back edge of the bus. That way I only simply had to copy with parallel lines what I had already drawn. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel if you just need to roll the wheel a few paces. You can see I've thrown a couple of lines into the winch screen or windshield of our bus that will represent where the roof meets the windows on the other side and the little vent that's on the front of our bus I'm going to straighten up those vertical marks with an eraser shield a thin piece of metal that you can lay down and erase up against you can also do the same thing with a piece of paper this metal eraser shield is not much thicker than a piece of paper just a little more durable. There we are. These little red lights and vents at the top of our bus's front have a detail, a little line that runs all the way around them. At this point, all of the contour lines on our bus are in place. It's time to start adding some value. I like to shade the things that are the darkest first. This is to ensure that I achieve a wide range of value. So the rims or the hubcaps on this bus appear to be pretty smooth like moon rims and they're just darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. The gradation bringing the light and dark together. The third tire that I can see under the left edge of the bumper is very dark. It's pretty much a silhouette or a black shape. The rubber portion of the front bumper is also black. So we'll find it early. You may notice that the bus has been photographed on a foggy, cloudy day. And there's just not a lot of contrast between the front side and the side of the bus. So as we start to shape the bus in, the body of the bus, we'll separate the front of the bus and the side of the bus a little bit in terms of value, a little bit more than what we actually see in the photograph. Remember, the photograph is a guide, but we're improving on the photograph by drawing from a lower angle and by adjusting the lighting on the bus ever so slightly. All right, with four diagonal lines, we'll make the Volkswagen symbol inside of the circle in the center of the front of our bus. And I'm gonna use a bridge, it's a clear piece of plexiglass, to start to shade in the rest of the bus without having to lay my hand on the paper. Of course, this is not requirements not necessary it's just something I like to use there's still some really dark accents along the top and right edge of each of the windows on the side of our bus and actually there's a little almost like the gutter on your house there's a little dark line that we can see above those windows so I put that in using the vanishing point on the right it's a rain channel keeps the rain from rolling off the top of our bus down on our windows. Just about finished with the dark accents over the windows and I'll go ahead and shade in what is black next to and on the rear tire of our Volkswagen bus. Don't forget to shade in the rear view mirror and we'll go ahead and start laying down some value across the painted portion of our Volkswagen bus. The bus is light blue, and in the photograph, the front and the side of the bus are the same in value, which doesn't really translate well onto the two-dimensional surface of a drawing. This is a form, it's basically a rectangular prism or a box-shaped form, Volkswagen bus, and it would be a little more pleasing to the eye if the front and the side of our bus were different in value. So we'll eventually darken the front 
to help better show the change in direction that the two planes or two flat sides that we can see move or travel through space. And we're going to work in the background a little bit in the ground plane and it starts with a cast shadow underneath our bus. Remember the cast shadow should be darkest next to the tires where the bus actually touches the ground. That rounded detail to separate the top and bottom half of our bus gets a little bit of a shadow along its bottom. And don't forget the license plate. You don't have to be too clear or detailed on the license plate because the license plate is not our focal point, but I don't want to leave it out entirely. Now the road that this bus is traveling down is between a two sides of a field and the field is a rough textured surface. So with scribble marks, I'll go ahead and start finding some of those darkest darks that we see in the field. You may notice a subtle shadow right below the two headlights of our bus. I'll go ahead and knock that in. And there's even a little bit of a light detail above the bent. Just with scribbling, I'll discover the row of vegetation that runs behind our bus about midway up and keep working up the texture in the field below that. I don't want the background to be as detailed or sharp as the drawing of the bus itself. The background is just that. It should take a back seat to our bus, no pun intended. So I'll keep it loose and scribbly. Some kind of a tree back there, pretty nondescript in the fog. And the sky is darker than the roof of the bus, so I need to throw just a little bit of value in that big open empty plane above our bus. Almost done. I'll throw a few marks in that help make the transition from the field to the road. The road, of course, is not white, so some relatively horizontal scribbly marks in the road help it to look darker but textured as well. Only a few more dark accents to define the door our driver door and it's time to separate the front of our bus from the side of our bus with more of a medium gray value. There we are. That looks better. A little value along the bottom edge, soften up the corner of the bus and that's it. So this is how we use a photograph but improve on a photograph. In this case by using two-point linear perspective. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing at TotalDrawing.com.